Whether you like to admit it or not, e-bikes are quicker than normal mountain bikes. But wait, don't turn the channel off just yet. We've even tested this before on the channel when I put the Shark e-bike against my Voodoo Bazango Pro hardtail on a 45 minute blue trail. Being a relatively pedally trail, the e-bike's motor helped it cruise through to be over 10 minutes quicker than my hardtail. But as many of you commented, what would happen to the results on a faster and more technical downhill? Well today, I brought both bikes to the trail with me, and that's exactly what we're going to find out. For this, I'm at a small woodland just outside Sheffield. Home to a couple of fast and exciting trails with an easy push-up track up the middle, this should be a perfect testing ground for a head-to-head -head challenge. Now, here's the brain teaser. The e-bike is of course going to be quicker on the climb, but the hardcore hardtail is going to be quicker on the descent. So, I guess the question is, will the speed of the hardtail on the downhill be able to make up for the e-bike's rapid climbing ability? Place your bets now. The idea for this test is simple. I'm going to start my stopwatch at the bottom of the hill and ride for exactly 30 minutes on each bike. I'll ride the same two trails in the same order for both bikes and see which one does more laps. So, first off to set a baseline time, we're on the Voodoo Bazango Pro. Okay, the time is set for half an hour. Let's go. Known to be a good climber, the Bazango Pro has no problem getting up the hills. I know the e-bike's generally quicker up the hills, but this hardtail isn't slow. So because I'm going to be pushing solidly for half an hour, I've got to make sure I don't burn myself out. I want to try and stay fast till the end. Although I'm using two very different bikes, this is not a test to see which bike brand is better. Apart from being hardtails, the two bikes are very different and have very different uses. The thing I'm testing today is manual power versus electric motor, and I'm going to be using a lot of both. Approaching the top of the climb, now comes the good stuff. Okay, first climb done. Time some downhill. Here we go. Dropping into the trail, the hardtail comes into its element. Full of rollers, berms and jumps, this is the perfect machine to whip through the trees. On this terrain, its light and agile nature should put it way ahead of the heavy e-bike. When short on time, people often use e-bikes for riding multiple laps of the same trails, just like we're doing today. It's a way to maximize the number of descents you can fit in and not waste any energy on the climb back up. But how many extra laps can you really get in on an e-bike compared to a manual one? I guess we'll find out. This first trail is really fast and aggressive. There is no dead time on the bike and you're constantly tackling obstacles or moving to set yourself up for the next one. This ride is smooth and extremely fun. Making good time, I'm coming to the end of the first downhill. From here, it's just a short traverse back up to the start gate to begin lap two. Okay, one lap done. Back up for number two. Back on the hill climb, I'm in an easy gear and my legs are spinning comfortably. This isn't a tough climb, but knowing how quickly the e-bike will make it up the hill, I'm keeping the power on. Although it's not a steep or technical climb, the toughest part is near the top where it gets loose and rocky. At this point, I'm only halfway through lap two, but I'm already starting to feel my legs. Okay, two climbs done. Time to hit the second trail. Here we go. The second downhill trail is a bit longer than the first. This one has a bit of a rougher experience. It has plenty of berms and a few rock features to play on, but it involves a lot more pedaling. But with time ticking away, I wasn't hanging around. This section's gonna be interesting because it has something for both bikes. The hardtail will be quicker over the more technical terrain, but the Tiger Shark has the ability to keep me at a more constant speed. This section could be the make or break of the whole challenge. As you can see, the trail surface is much rougher than the first trail, and there are huge rocks sticking out of the berms and laying in the middle of the trail. The lighter and more maneuverable hardtail made short work of these, but I still had to keep my wits about me and keep my eye on the trail ahead. It was definitely a bumpy ride. As I reach the end of the second trail, I feel slightly shaken to pieces but I haven't got any time to stop and link my wounds because I'm heading straight back up for another lap. So the time is in my pocket. I don't know how long I've been going for. I'm starting to feel these climbs now. <sighs> Making my way up the climb for the third time, I'm definitely starting to feel the pace. Knowing that the time is ticking down, I have to keep the power on. Sure. This is the third time I've climbed up this hill. And yeah, not as easy as I first thought it was. Dropping into my third descent of the challenge, I was back on the faster trail again. 
because it only takes me a couple of minutes to get to the bottom of this one, I knew it would put me in good stead to see if I could fit another lap in afterwards. The more I pushed the hardtail on the descent, the more time I could make up. Without any rest at the top of the climbs, I wasn't getting much time to recover before the active descent. At this stage of the challenge, I predicted that both bikes would be pretty close to each other. I know the odds would say that the e-bike will come out slightly ahead in this challenge, but with the speed that I can descend on the hardtail, I've got to be clawing back some time from the e-bike. Making my way across the start line, I'm panting hard. <sighs> okay, three laps done. Can I do a fourth? Here we go. Three laps done and there can't be much time left on the clock. Can I fit in one more lap? But then a short way into the fourth climb, this happens. Oh, there's my alarm. It's been half hour. There we go. Time to stop. Whew. So with the hardtail finished, I managed to complete three full laps of the course and I was starting on my fourth climb. A decent effort. Now it's time for the e-bike. Can it be three laps? Okay, e-bike power assist up to maximum. Let's get ready to go. Okay, 30 minutes. Let's go. Off to a flying start on the e-bike. From the previous videos we've made on the Tiger Shark, we know it can climb. After setting what I think is a solid effort on the hardtail, I'm keen to see how the e-bike compares. I knew that the motor would speed me up on the climbs, but I had underestimated just how fast it would be, and it's practically effortless. So the e-bike is obviously going to be a lot quicker on the uphills. I mean, I'm absolutely flying here. Making short work of the climb, I made it to the top of the hill in what felt like record pace. It was now time to drop into the first ascent. Okay, here we go. Descent number one. Being heavier, e-bikes tend to be slightly less agile, and I'm going to have to really work on the descent to make sure I'm not losing much time on the tighter sections. But an added bonus of this bike are the smaller 27.5 inch wheels compared to the 29er on the hardtail. These things make short work of corners and help to maintain speed in this upper section. I forgot how good this bike is around corners. Now, although the Tiger Shark has a motor, because I'm descending faster than 15.5 kilometers an hour, I'm not getting any pedal assist. Just like the hardtail, I'm using good old gravity, so the motor won't help me here. Making short work of the first lap, the motor kicks in to assist me up the hill again. On to lap two. Knowing that there are three laps to beat, I wasn't wasting any time on the hill climb. Even the steep sections weren't a problem. Okay, second climb done. Time to hit trail two. Because this trail is flatter than the other one, I may get more of a chance to engage the motor and get some free assist on here. But where the smaller wheels were a huge advantage around the tight corners of the first trail, they might not be so advantageous here. I might struggle to match the speed of the hardtail, due to its bigger wheels it's better able to cope with bumpier terrain. Although this trail has a lot less gradient than the other one, it's still a blue trail after all, and it certainly has its challenges. But all in all, I feel like it's neck and neck at this point between the bikes. It's still early days and there's all to play for. With two trails ticked off, I have to complete another lap on the e-bike to be able to match the hardtail. I'm confident that I can get another lap in because I know I can make short work of the hill. And at the risk of annoying a lot of viewers, I was kind of enjoying the uphill. Man, I'm so impressed with this e-bike. Dare I say it, it's actually making the uphills fun. Heading back to the first trail, I certainly noticed the difference in my composure when I drop into the trails. I definitely have fresher legs at the top of the hill when using the e-bike. Although my legs are feeling okay, it's a bit harder on your upper body as you have to maneuver a heavier bike around the trail. And there are plenty of corners to contend with here. With a motor, e-bikes are always gonna be heavier than manual bikes. But as the technology develops, they're getting lighter and lighter with longer and longer batteries. Reaching the bottom of the trail, the two bikes were almost neck and neck, three laps each. I don't know how much longer I have left, but if I can make it up this climb, the e-bike has the opportunity to take the lead. Okay, that's three laps done. Let's see if I can get a fourth in this time. Kicking into high gear, I started the fourth climb. Soon, I passed the point where I had to stop on the hardtail. The e-bike is ahead, but I feel the time ticking away and the timer could go off at any second. So how much further can the e-bike go in 30 minutes? I reached the top of the fourth climb and headed into the trail. Okay, lap four, here we go. 
This being the longer one, I know I'm going to have to really put some effort in to be able to make it to the bottom before I run out of time. I'm determined to complete the lap, but with every turn and every feature, I dreaded the sound of the alarm telling me that the time was up. Luckily, I managed to navigate the rock features and corners with no issues. But as I reached the bottom of the run, the alarm still hasn't gone off. So a full lap ahead of the manual bike, I start my fifth climb on the e-bike. At this late stage of the challenge, the e-bike had left me with plenty of energy in my legs. And for perhaps the first time ever in my life, I was able to overtake people whilst going uphill. Still motoring on, I turned into the fifth trail. The timer still hasn't gone off. At this point, I'm starting to wonder if I forgot to start the timer at all. It must be running on fumes by now. It's about to go off any second. But... I made it all the way to the bottom and the timer still hadn't gone off. This is wild. Although my body was coping, my brain certainly wasn't. After all these laps, I was starting to lose count. Whoa, four laps done. Can we really do a fifth? I can't have much time left. I'm bombing it up this climb. Two full laps ahead of the manual bike, the e-bike was really showing what a bike with a motor attached can do. And remember, this is one of Shark's affordable bikes, so e-bikes don't have to cost you an arm and a leg. Amazed at what was happening, I dropped into the sixth trail of the day. But no sooner had I dropped in... Oh, that's the alarm. The challenge is over. There it is, half an hour. Whew. So there you have it. In the 30 minutes, the e-bike managed to complete five and a half laps of the course, compared to just over three on the manual bike. It's clear that the speed an e-bike can climb at, and the ease at which they do it, puts them ahead of us mere mortals on our non-pedal assisted acoustic bikes. But of course, we all probably expected the e-bike to be ahead. I mean, that's exactly what they're designed for. But it was interesting to see just how far ahead it got in such a short time. So if you're someone who wants to hit laps, then an e-bike might be a good tool to help you maximize your time. If you're out on a short fitness ride, then jumping on your normal bike will be the best option. So, after all that, I'm off for a well-deserved rest. Thanks for watching, remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.